Hello, Internet! I recently made a couple baby quilts using a disappearing four patch quilt block, and today I'll show you my whole process from start to finish. So, if you like really sped up videos with some awkward commentary and quite a few cat interruptions, then this is the video for you. To start, I'm using two Charm Square packs that I bought from Jordan Fabrics. The first is from Riley Blake called Into the Woods, and the accent fabric is Kona Cotton in the color Ash. And for the backing, I'm using this Buffalo Check yardage that I got from Joann's. I'm sorting out the squares into the four square patches before sewing them together. And of course, my supervisor stops by to make sure I'm not slacking. Okay, enough playing around. Now I'm finger pressing the seam allowances in opposite directions before ironing and sewing the full blocks together. I have a full tutorial video that goes into more detail on how I make these blocks and spin the seams open. I'll link to that in the description. to cut. As I cut up and swap around the pieces, I'm keeping them stacked in order on a 10 inch square ruler so it's easier to move them around without getting it all mixed up when I chain piece these back together. Yes, I realize the ruler is upside down. The struggle of crafting while left-handed is you have to do everything backwards.
making baby quilts because they come together so quickly. This year in particular, we had a lot going on with some of my cousins having babies, plus I was getting ready to move, so this was something I could make quickly and still have a lovely finished quilt. This block looks really complicated, even though it actually is pretty simple to do. And I like that there are still some bigger pieces to show off the pattern of the fabric. all of the finished blocks, giving them a good steam before starting on the most time-consuming part, deciding the layout. I spent a good 45 minutes swapping these blocks around until I couldn't see straight. Then finally decided on a layout. Maybe. I probably swap more after this. But once decision paralysis subsides, I stack each row in order with a label so I don't get anything mixed up when I sew the whole quilt together. I'm pressing the last few rows down and then giving the whole quilt top a good final press. And I'm ironing the backing fabric to get out all the creases. I need to get two backings out of this one piece of yardage, so I'm pulling a page out of Project Runway and just ripping it down the middle. Now I assemble the quilt sandwich with the backing, a cotton batting from Warm and Natural, and of course the top, and measuring to make sure it's even on all sides. I thread based my quilts together. I used this curved needle from John James, the smaller size, and just some polyester thread that I have in my stash. Come on, focus. There we go. I baste every few inches using essentially a really long pad stitch so the layers don't shift around. I've tried basting with safety pins and I hate it, 
and I don't want to use a spray basting glue just because of the cat. I don't want it to get everywhere. But I don't mind thread basting. It might take a little longer, but I find it's easier to move the quilt around and I don't have any issues removing these threads later, even with machine quilting. I'm basting all around the perimeter with a large running stitch. The final size came out to around 36 inches wide by 45 inches long, so a good size for a baby. And it's completely machine wash and dry because, you know, babies are messy and parents are tired, so it's gotta be easy to clean. And another check-in with my supervisor while I get ready to quilt this together. She says I'm good to go. If you're wondering, I'm wearing quilting gloves here. They have little grippies on the fingers to help push everything through because it can get really tiring moving this much fabric through the machine, even for a small quilt like this. I'm using a walking foot and cotton thread and just making straight lines along each seam, keeping it nice and simple today. And the most satisfying part, removing all the basting threads. And the second most satisfying part, cutting off the excess fabric around the edges before adding the binding. For the binding, I cut two and a half inch strips from some extra fabric in my stash and sew them together into one long piece. There are hundreds of tutorials on YouTube for how to attach quilt bindings, which explain it way better than I can. I basically sew the first edge of the binding on by machine, and then I wrap it around the edge and sew it onto the back by hand, which is by far my least favorite part of the process, so I didn't even film it, but I did at least take a photo, which I'll add here. It does come out really nice though, so it's worth the suffering. And with that, the quilt is finished. I made the second quilt with a white accent color and a different layout so you can see how the same block can make two totally different quilts just by the way it's put together. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.